Welcome to the podcast. I'm Tosh Taylor. And I'm Jenna Mord. And today, if you're watching us on video, you can tell we are coming to you from location, which is one of our favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. And we love to showcase fantastic local businesses and fantastic local business owners. So today, we're coming to you from Reconnect Health Center, which is the north end of Moncton. And for those of you who are from the area, you might even be going, what's that all? Because it is still fairly new and it opened during the pandemic. So we are here with co-owner Katie Kelly. Hi. So Katie, start by telling everyone just a little bit about Reconnect Health. Uh, well, firstly, welcome to Reconnect Health Center. Thank you so much for stopping in. Uh, Reconnect Health Center, I'm the co-owner along with uh, my friend Aaron Matheson, and we're both two public floor physiotherapists who thought that Moncton deserved a women's focused clinic. So that's what we aim to do, by bringing a lot of multidisciplinary professions that are aimed at helping women throughout the different changes through their life um, and to kind of collect them all under one roof. So that's what we've done. And as you said, we opened in late June amidst the p pandemic. So that was interesting, but here we are. So far we're doing okay. <laughs> well, and I would say more than okay because I've come for both myself and my children for various things and used many of the different practitioners <laughs> here. And you guys are booked out. We like, are, yeah. Find the spot is tricky, which is fantastic and speaks to need that you saw in the market before you even opened. Well, and we've had such an outpouring of support from the community. We're so grateful because Aaron and I both say we know that not every business has been able to withstand the challenges that the pandemic has thrown at them so we are just so grateful that people continue to support us but you're right i think it is it it was a need in our community um and we're really happy to provide that right now so um you've said a couple of times now need in our community so what signs were you and Aaron seeing right <laughs> what <laughs> signs so Aaron, as i said we're both pelvic floor physiotherapists so we work with a lot of women who are experiencing pelvic floor issues like urinary incontinence pelvic organ prolapse we work with a lot of women um, uh, preparing for pregnancy and menopause as well. And then within the clinic, we have a uh, dietitian. So we've got Jillian, who's a dietitian who works with baby led weaning and she works with toddler feeding um, challenges and she works with busy women and she helps prepare women during pregnancy as well. Gastrointestinal issues. We have an acupuncturist here who works in women's health field as well. Our massage therapists are all trained to work with pregnant women. Um, we've got psychology here. We've got pediatric physiotherapists here. We've got a private gynecologist here. I'm trying to go through the list. Who am I yeah. forgetting? <laughs> we've got chiropractic care. You said you have 16? About 16 practitioners now. Yeah, right I have to keep counting each month. When we started, it was Aaron and I, one massage therapist, and we were trying to make sure we weren't overwhelming the front of house. So we added a new practitioner in every two to three weeks, and we've done so. Um, the first four, four or five months, and now we're adding one in every month or month and a half right now. So we're still onboarding staff. So I can't ever recall how many staff members yeah. are here at, at any given time. Um, but we really wanted to, we heard that women were really struggling to find resources to help them with a lot of these taboo subjects that we might talk about with our friends, but we might not even do that. So to have professionals here that can offer that help to them, um, it's it's really nice to see that we, we kind of went out on a limb to offer these 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 um, these treatments and that women are really responding to it. Yeah. Because I have to say, even ten years ago when I was first entering the whole motherhood phase of things, the types of services that are offered here weren't available in Moncton. Like to find even a prenatal yoga class was a needle in a haystack. I remember finding two of them. Yeah. And I would say, and the idea of a doula. Yeah. <laughs> no, people didn't even know what you were asking about here mm -hmm. even 10 years ago. So yeah. the changes in that time have been so significant. It's so fantastic. Can you talk a little bit about that shift that you're sure. seeing in terms of what people are offering and what people are looking for? Um, and it's interesting because I started my career 10 years ago. So I have seen a huge shift from when I started to now. Um, when I began, even the, the understanding from the medical community of what pelvic floor physiotherapy was, wasn't there. Like we had to go in and do lunch and learns and explain, yes, physiotherapists are certified in doing internal pelvic exams. And now the need exceeds what we can cope with really here. I think one of the things that has really helped is social media. And I know no, social media doesn't help everything, but I think that it's given access to information to a lot of women. And where female, especially like female pelvic issues have been such a taboo subject in the past. If I think back to 
my grandmother's generation discussing pelvic floor problems, and even my mother's generation discussing pelvic floor problems, it was very hush hush. You maybe maybe make a joke about um, peeing your pants and laughing, like when you laugh, right? Like maybe that would be a joke, but we wouldn't talk about more more complex issues like pain or uh, birth trauma or any of those types of things that can make people uncomfortable. But with the advent of social media, I see personalities that are speaking to these and they're making them more mainstream and women coming forward with more stories. And now they're not going to stand for what previous generations stood for. They're not going to let their health and let these women's health problems just kind of cope with them behind closed doors. They want treatment now. And a lot of women are coming in prophylactically before issues occur in an effort to prevent things happening in the future. That's amazing. I know we hear this all the time with people we interview or run into people on the street. Oh, you know Katie Kelly? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love her. She changed my life. That like has got to feel so amazing. And congratulations on no, that. No, thank you. I like to think, <laughs> I've been told by friends and family before that um, you don't have to be the best, you just have to be the only one in town. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I was lucky enough to start off as one of the first ones in town. But we have Erin that's joined me like ages ago now. We just hired another pelvic floor physiotherapist. Our massage therapists are so well educated on the topics. Like everyone that we bring in here, we really want to make sure that we can have a frank discussion with our patients, whether they're here for those issues or not. Um, but we can have a frank discussion with them and feel like we're educated and can hold our ground if they want to bring that, that information to us. Yeah. What do you think is going to be you know, the, the longer term shift here, like, you know, you said you started about 10 years ago, even to try to think 10 years from now, what dream do you have of a difference in women's health in New Brunswick and Moncton? I think that, firstly, that's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, I think what I hope to see, even though it goes against my business plan, would be to see more services offered in the public sector. So we are a private clinic, obviously. People can access us by paying out of pocket or by using private health insurance, but we recognize that not everyone has that availability um, and privilege. So I do think that it should be something that we see moving more and more to the public sector. We are starting to see that in New Brunswick, that there are pelvic floor physiotherapists working in some of the hospitals in part-time positions. We don't yet have that in Moncton. Um, but right now the trend is actually to move things out of the public sector and into the private sector. Uh, one of our massage therapists, Alicia Trenum, is offering, she's also um, a certified birth educator, so we've been offering a lot of birth education classes out of the clinic. Uh, because there's a need for that, the public sector is offering less and less of those. So you can certainly access things at the Pregnancy Wellness Center, uh, the Family Resource Center has lots of classes of, that are available. The Moncton Hospital has recorded a lot of prenatal sessions that they've moved them online. Mm -hmm. So you see that there is this cohort of individuals who might not have access to best care right now. And I think that as a community, that that's something that we should be tackling in, in the next decade for sure. Now, I don't know about you, but those prenatal classes at the hospital <laughs> before you have a baby, like, come on, I learned nothing. I, like, <laughs> it was like, you're gonna have a baby, good luck. That's, that's basically, it. like, there are so many things I went into, like, you know, into labor, you have this birth plan, oh yeah, this is, good. no, there's, like, don't bring a birth plan, because it's not going to happen, <laughs> um, and then the follow-up after, I mean, I birthed them to giant baby, so, the first time, um, but there were a lot of things that I wish I had have known, because yeah. we knew she was going to be big, so had I known that, it would have been nice to find a place like this, to say like this thing side of me is ginormous what can i do <laughs> does it get out don't let tosh scare you <laughs> we've told you this many times <laughs> pregnancy and me were not friends but she was nine pounds seven ounces okay yep. give me a break <laughs> yeah i had my three together and it barely no. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, is now she's the tiny one but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so I think Tosh, you said the exact words that drive Aaron and us forward in this. That you said, I I wish that I would have known this. Mm -hmm. And Aaron and I, like with all of the, like, with all that we do, we always say we'll know that our job is done when we don't hear women saying that anymore. When we feel that everyone is approaching all of those life changes, and that pregnancy delivery, but menopause as well, like all of these shifts that we don't really talk about. If all women feel like they've received a proper education and did all that they could do to help themselves and to take care of their own health, that's when we retire. <laughs> <laughs>
That is it. So That's the go, bar. You're to retire. retire. <laughs> <laughs> and to that point, though, there's quite a few times, I know because I've done it myself, like I brought my children here around issues that I never would have thought in terms of like bedwetting and incontinence and, you know, all kinds of things that I think we will see that greater shift of, you know, more teen girls yeah. coming in who are dealing with severe cramping or different things like that, that, you know, I remember, you know, I have some family who had some serious issues and it was just like, well, take some extra time, I'll stay yeah. home from school and uh, maybe we'll put you on the pill early. Like, mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. There's so much education that I think we're seeing more and more. I'm seeing kids coming into practice for various things that they are going to grow up with those conversations you're talking about, yeah. which is going to be such a huge shift. I think you're right. Again, I think that speaks to social media. We have parents that are more informed about these about these conditions now. And you mentioned kind of painful menstruations and which is Endometriosis Awareness Month. So that is a big change that I have seen in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, trying to get a diagnosis of endometriosis, I mean, there's some stats that say it takes 15 to 17 years for women to get that diagnosis. Oh I really have to applaud the medical community for really ramping up investigation in that. Now, research is still desperately needed on best practice and how to cope with that, but I think the diagnosis is being given much faster and women are learning that painful periods are not normal and are seeking medical advice and the practitioners are listening. So we, like the fa like family physicians, but gynecologists, they know now they're doing investigations, they're helping, they're sympathetic to that. Um, but we really don't want to hear women being told anymore that they're there, painful menstruation is normal and, and we hear far less of that than we would have a decade ago. So I think that is one of those changes that I'm happy to report for sure. There is, um, like we've mentioned before, social media and I think, and I actually heard this the other day and I thought, huh, you're right. But for women who are dealing with a lot of these problems that were not talked about, um, they tell you not to go to social media for your medical advice, but a lot of times it's the women that actually, because they've been through it, they put out what these signs were that they had and someone else goes, oh, wow, like that's me. Yeah. And then they know to go to someone like you or to their physician yeah, or what have you. It's not that they're getting a medical advice right. online from social yeah. media. You get that awareness. Exactly. Then go find an expert like Katie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go check with your doctor first, for yeah. sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you're going to say, if it's nothing you deal with, is tell them where they should go. Yeah. Like, and I think we do a pretty good job at that. It's been interesting because with the pandemic, um, as practitioners, we are noticing things coming into office that we weren't ever the first practitioner on before. So medical care, because of its telehealth, because it's a little bit longer wait time for some of the things now, we're seeing things on our table that we are not accustomed to seeing. So we've had a good, I think we've got a very good communication system with the gynecological community here. So just say like, no, you need to see this patient. Like, it's hard as a lay person when you're reporting symptoms over the phone, sometimes you don't know what the physician's looking for. So um, so it has been an interesting couple of months <laughs> seeing some, some, you know, infections rates are higher than what we're accustomed to seeing. Sutures or stitches that might have popped that we're not used to seeing as much. But we're, that, we're coming out of that now. I think more and more the medical appointments are opening up again. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's nice and interesting to hear that that collaboration that you have, that sense of community among the practitioners mm -hmm. who, you know, in the past that might not have been there is the idea that I'm getting, or maybe in other jurisdictions that doesn't have that same relationship. Yeah, it was, um, it was, it was a new field for physiotherapists to get into. I mean, it's about 20 years old, but coming into the Maritimes, we're always a little bit late to the game, I always, find here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we've been received really well, and we work very, very hard to provide exceptional care here. We really, the people, we, Aaron and I consider this like our house, and the people that we want to work with, we want to make sure that they are as passionate about working with their patients as Aaron and I are, so that you can provide that care that's above what people look back to. We always want people to be leaving here feeling like they really were taken care of. From entering in the front door to getting our email address when you leave if you've got questions at 3 a.m. So. <laughs> now she's gonna answer you at 3 a.m. But maybe, <laughs> depends on <laughs> when we're kids up. up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been known to do it on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, like you said, about 16 different people working in here. Mm -hmm. I even noticed that you have um, some coming in and doing Pilates too, we right? We do, yes. So we have, um, yes, we've got Pilates in here. We're trying to do as much postpartum exercise class as we can. So Sasha's doing Pilates class. We want to do um, parent and baby classes as well. Things were slowed down a little bit when we went through 
kind of modified orange and red phase, but we're picking back up again. So when we built the clinic, we really wanted to include community space to offer classes, but to offer community education as well. We were able to sneak in some um, during the summer and during the fall, we had a pregnancy symposium, symposium as well. And then hopefully moving into the spring, we'll be able to expand on the classes that we're offering. Infant massage is another one that we've had that's been incredibly popular. We had to add three or four more classes a week um, just to cope with the demand of that. So I think that it's been really hard on moms being at home, giving, like, giving birth and delivering during the pandemic and then stuck in their house really what i can't imagine with children i remember going through my kind of postpartum phase and just getting out and being able to see other moms mm -hmm. and do programming and they've really really missed that opportunity so i think that now that we're starting to see those programs open up again that they're coming out in droves to get community support and to talk to other moms and to socialize again so i'm happy to see that because i think the load on mental health was probably um quite significant through through the, the last year, really. Mm -hmm. I remember doing in massage with our oldest, and it had so little to do with the massage. Yep. It had yeah. everything to do with being in the space with someone who who was used to babies, mm -hmm. and someone who was used to, oh, just try this or whatever. But it's that, that kind voice. And I remember various parents around the circle at different times just opening up. Yeah. 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 It, it really didn't have anything. <laughs> no, it's therapeutic for the mothers more so than even the babies sometimes, right? So I think it's a, a huge need. And we, we see that starting back up amongst, um, like all over town, I think. We're seeing all the classes come back. And, and I think that, that will be good. It's certainly needed. Is there anything that you guys are missing here that you're looking for? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'd like to bring on more staff. We're very booked, as you mentioned. <laughs> So anyone who wants to apply, feel free to send a resume. <laughs> uh, no, there are, I mean, certainly um, we're, we're starting to develop more of our pediatric side of things. We've got a pediatric physiotherapist that has recently started. We've got another one that's scheduled to start in the next month or so. We'd love to incorporate more of that aspect. The biggest barrier that we see offering things like speech language um, or uh, uh, like more the occupational, the OT side of things, is that they're not offering much of their private health insurance. Okay. So access to care and payment for it is a little bit trickier, but we're trying to see how we can expand on that. We really did make a point of trying to include lots of different price points. So yes, you can book private sessions with all of our practitioners, but for example, Alicia with her birth classes, they'll offer webinars, or Jillian has a lot of her dietetics webinars at a reduced price point so that you can still get access to information um, at you don't necessarily have to pay for those private fees. And I have to say that I think almost everyone who works out of this building has social media channels of their own mm -hmm. that are just chock full of so much fantastic information and empowerment and encouragement. Like the, the vibe that comes out <laughs> of this building and the people that you've brought together, it just, it shines through and it pops up all over my social media. Feeds. Mm -hmm. well, thank Me you too. for saying that. That's what we've really tried. We're really trying to do. It's hard when you're uh, when you're a for-profit business um, that wants to help the community too. So we try to do the best that we can on both aspects of that while still running a business. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, a also, in, in a pandemic. In a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so what are your social channels so that people can follow? So them? you can find us uh, under Reconnect Health. And that's on, where are we on now? Instagram, we are on Facebook. All of the practitioners, if you go to our website, which is www.reconnecthealth.ca, then you should be able to find all of our practitioners. And they all, as you mentioned, have their own channels as well. So we're kind of like this horde of people now on social media just <laughs> throwing information at you all the time. That's what we need. Like yeah. Fantastic collective. That's what yeah. I got. Actually, I was thinking about it on the way over as very much reminiscent of the cooperative movement. Mm -hmm. I've been diving back into the history of cooperative movement lately, which is something I grew up knowing very deeply and I realized it's it's informed a lot of the way I look at things and why I don't quite get how, how other organizations and other communities don't have this sense of community in some ways and as I was thinking about the co-op movement I was thinking about what you started here and while it's not a cooperative model it's very much that same empowerment and yeah. it's just fantastic to see what what is trickling out from that here yeah. 
Erin, so my co-owner Erin, she thrives on watching women-led businesses grow. So that's a huge passion of hers and she's always advocating for women in business and physiotherapy we're predominantly a female dominated profession but many of the clinics are owned by men so we really love to see women in healthcare starting to take their own at the top of like platforms and leading discussions and putting treatment protocols forward and expanding our scope of practice so that's definitely an initiative of hers that we talk about frequently around here <laughs> okay so i think We've talked about a whole bunch of stuff that you guys offer here, but we haven't talked about what should people be looking for to know they need to come here. And I know that you've got a broad range of stuff. Some people <laughs> just stick with what like you how do. How much time have yeah. we yet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for pelvic floor concerns, if you have any pain in your pelvis, if you're leaking urine, gas, or feces, if you feel that you have a vaginal heaviness, if you feel things just aren't right down there, if you're looking to prepare for birth, or if you've noticed changes as you age, changes in your bowels, changes in sexual function, then those are all the things that we're monitoring for and that we want people to report to their physician and then come in for an appointment with us as well because there's lots that we can do. We do try to take a multidisciplinary um, approach to all of this. So you see us offer services if we think that there's something that's viable for your treatment and moving it forward. And quickly, the rundown again of all the different practitioners. Okay. Uh, not by name, yeah, <laughs> not, not trying to like, yeah, just like in general practice areas. What do you got going on here? So we got pelvic floor physiotherapy, we've got massage therapy, we've got psychology, we've got chiropractic care, acupuncture, private gynecology, registered dietetics, pediatric physiotherapy. Oh, we also do breastfeeding physiotherapy. So if you're having issues with mastitis, lactation, Everybody engorgement. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's fantastic. We can get people in. Um, and then our classes, we've got Pilates. We're looking to get into more yoga again. Um, we've got postpartum exercise classes. And then we have educational things like baby led weaning, toddler feeding programs, birth education, infant massage. So you can always check out our social media. We try to promote all the new treatments and the new um, classes best we can for sure. And for folks who are wondering just exactly where this is, you kind of referenced Wood Mountain, but <laughs> talk a little bit about, because th this building didn't exist. A new building. Before the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up on Google now though, so that's hey, good. Nice. <laughs> so we're at 25 Gorge Road, but we're actually at the corner of Gorge and Mountain Road, right behind the second cup in the Royal Bank. So if you kind of look behind those buildings, that's where you find us. Aaron and I joke that we always use locations to work that have coffee shop, like literally in the parking lot. Yes, so. yes, you do. I appreciate this. Yeah, it works well for our clientele as well. Yeah. <laughs> How convenient. I'm on my way. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for watching the show. And Katie, thank you so much for coming and showcasing your business with us today. And thank you so much for taking the time to recognize all of these professions and what you're doing for women's health and what you're doing for the parent community in general. We really appreciate it as well.